and I like that. Of course. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Shine Together. I am your host and founder, Pratiba Day. Today, you are tuning in with me and Mr. David Figueroa. And Hello. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and we've already started talking a bit and we're really excited to be here today to deliver value to you and to share what David does um, in his life to serve others. And we use courage, hope and imagination on this platform to showcase the journeys. So with that being said, how, how are you feeling? <laughs> I am well. Uh, we've had I've had a pretty eventful week with uh, I've been um I'm working from home since the schools are kind of off for camp. You know, I do. I work summer camp during the summer. Oh, wow. So now I'm just working from home and just taking it easy day by day. And it's uh, it's pretty good so far. We just had a little minor storm. You know, trip up in Florida. So <laughs> we didn't get we didn't get anything. So fortunately, you know. Where Where do you live? I live in Florida. Oh, so nice. You know, I've yet to go to Florida. Really, you haven't been there. Yes. I feel everyone and you know their mom and grandma has been there but me. No, never in my life have I been. But when I was in Georgia, I was the closest living to Florida during that time. So mm. So have you have you been to Disney at all? Like No, I didn't have that kind of childhood. We don't do we didn't have vacations. So we, I'm South Asian. So to us going to Statue of Liberty, coming to America, that's the vacation. Going to Canada right. in a car ride, like that's the vacation. Um but as a child now, did you? Uh, oh, yeah. I've, I've been uh, several times, you know, so from my childhood. But since, uh, you know, wow. since I've been an adult, it's been a lot less, you know, because, you know, you get busy, you have obligations, you know, you have work. And it's like that. It's like for me, the next time I'll probably go is when I end up having, you know, my own kids, you know, oh. I'll take them over, you know, but that's that's like way down the line. It's like way, you know. Hey, you don't know that. Anything's possible anytime. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm going to tell the viewers a bit about you before we continue on. So David Figueroa shares his story and journey of being diagnosed with cerebral palsy since birth, highlighting many struggles in the education system, dealing with CP and successes as a former three-sport athlete and three-time state champion cyclist. By the way, that is so impressive. I don't know how to ride a bike <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> And while he's being a middle school teacher, which is also incredible, uh, and with, the, with cerebral palsy and others around the world to show that there is light among all the challenges behind it. So, wow. How do you feel about that? Like when I read that about you? I feel I feel pretty, pretty good, actually, considering mm -hmm. um, I had a, the kind of start the whole, the whole journey. Um, I came up from being a child that could not read, could not write, could not walk until I was eight years old. So um, I was always, I have always since I was a child considered myself the under underdog, because I, I feel like in, in life it's okay to be a champion, but it's even better to be an underdog. Ooh. You know? Yeah, I was just telling my friend Sydney this morning because he moved to Brazil and I was like, you're an underdog because he just put his head down and he got to work like behind the scenes and not very social, but he made it and he moved to Brazil. So I was like, you're an underdog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like behind the scenes work that you have to put in without, you know, letting the world know what you're up to. Exactly. And it's I feel like it's so much better that you're an underdog because it it brings that hunger. You're hungrier. You 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 want to achieve that goal versus if you're a champion, you're like, I've already made it. I don't need to stress mm. anymore. You know, I don't need to work hard. I can. I've already. You know, I can, I can, I can relax. I can, you know, do this. But when you're an underdog, you have so much more to offer people. You know, and that's mm. that was my case. You know, um, I also grew up with a uh, with a with a biological mom who had me at. 16 years old she was 16 years old when she, had me. she was practically a child yeah and could, could you imagine the challenge of being a child raising another child who happens to have cerebral palsy you have no idea what to do where do you, where do you turn fortunately i had a i had a stepmom who was with my dad at the time and she kind of helped guide her 
And then I had this fortunate, um, this luck of mine that I had a co-parenting system where I had one parent provided love, which is my mom. Mm. The parent provided that tough love, that tough love saying, he's got more potential than people think. I'm still going to try my best to help you give him a good life. And um, fast forward until I was eight years old. And then right around that time, uh, my biological mom ended up passing away. Unfortunately, she was 23 years old. And then my um, my stepmom had the had to make the decision of do uh, do I continue on with my youth and you know be able to be able to live a normal normal life as a young adult you know be able to go travel and live all these experiences and enjoy life or step up and be a parent and raise this child and give this child the future that he could possibly lose if I don't step up. Wow. And, and she said, you know what? I choose this, ch this child over my youth. And while she, while she, I mean, both my parents finished their degrees, they finished school, they had their, their college degrees while raising me. Wow. And I also had a younger brother, but he and I got estranged for, for years, but we kept in, we tried to keep in contact. We have different dads with the same mom. So, um, you know, my, my stepmom, she, she, she fought for everything for me. She took me to therapy, made sure I went to school. She took me out of, I used to be in special education classes. I mean, I started way at the very, I mean, I wouldn't say at the bottom, but as far as the education system, I was right there. And that, and that I, I know what it's like, you know, to be, to start at the very, very end of the education system and work your way up and then face discrimination in the education system as well. You know, having cerebral palsy in Puerto Rico. Wow. Wow. You were in Puerto Rico at this time? I was alternating between Puerto Rico and Florida, you know, both, oh, both wow. my parents. What resources do they have there? Do you know if they have any there? In Puerto Rico at this time? No, but I know back back when I lived there, mm -hmm. it was so disorganized and, you know, it was just, they didn't really care to really assist those with disabilities at the school that I, w I was at mm -hmm. because they didn't really, I had a teacher that didn't really bother helping me. She was like, I don't want him in my classroom. He's too slow. He, wow. he's not, he won't be able to, he won't be able to make it. Wow. Um, even though I got straight A's, you know, I was a very good student, um, very bright. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, the school system in Puerto Rico said differently, and uh, you know, not you know, do the doctors said the same thing when I when I was when I was growing up, and they said, "Oh, your son's not going to be able to walk. He's not going to be able to read. He's not going to be able to write. He'll be a he'll be a vegetable for the rest of his life, and mm -hmm. he won't he won't amount to anything." They told that to my parents' face. You know, they said, they're so wrong. <laughs> I'm laughing because of all the work that you do. It's like you live a normal life. You know, I, I do, thankfully, because of my stepmom, she pulled me out of that, the, uh, the, the wow. environment of, of, you know, I honestly, if it wasn't for her, I think my life would have been lost. You know, would have, I don't know what, what would have been today, you wow. know, without, without my parents. Wow. I want to meet her. <laughs> I want to have yeah. her on. <laughs> a, a, a lot of, a lot of, um, guests that a lot of shows that I've been on. They say the same thing, wow. and uh, you know, and, and she, she's, um, you know, I, I put forth effort on everything I do because of her and the skills that she gave me, and you know, and and it's funny because everything I accomplished, she throws it back at me. She's like, "You did this yourself. I didn't do this. I just guided you." Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it was it was a surreal moment graduating from from UCF and uh, realizing that I had accomplished something that my mom. My biological mom never did. She never got to finish. Uh, she finished elementary school, didn't fin finish. Uh, she finished middle school, but didn't finish high school. So I was the first one in my family to finish all three levels of schooling and university. My my brother didn't go to college, but he he ended up um, he ended up picking up a trade in um, in software engineering technology. That's really and, good. And he works for the top one of the top companies in the world be alongside Google and Microsoft. And he's only 27 years old. So we're both still relatively young and we're both at the top of our, our game. You know, we, 
despite our our differences and paths, our paths and our journeys. You know, we both never we both never stopped um, being close to each other. And that's another thing too is the fact that I still had my brother alongside me too. You know, throughout this whole thing. Wow. So do you feel like he was your support? Oh yeah, he he's always been my support. Mm. You know, as well. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you. <laughs> Alex said chai time. So let me ask you, uh, David, have you ever had Indian masala chai? I've never had it, but I do love tea and all kinds yeah. of hobbies. So, and so chai means tea. So I don't know what restaurants, the Indian restaurants they have around you, but you should definitely go have chai. Definitely. I have to try it for sure. Yeah. 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 I, I love trying new things. Yeah. It's mainly milk sugar and cardamom. And it can be cinnamon, ginger, uh, black pepper. It all depends like how they make it. But masala means to make it like spicy with some flavor. So, yeah, <laughs> I just want to let you know because you're on chai together today. So awesome! <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm that's why. You. That's how I started it. I got the name chai together from having chai, right? Indian tea with my mom every day because uh, I don't know if you read in the form, but she also has her own diagnosis. And that's why I was inspired to start this channel last year during the pandemic. Yeah. And now you're on it. So if I hadn't started it, I would have never met you, you know? Awesome. So. Alex, go away. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> so funny. So I want to ask you, what do you teach in middle school? I teach um, middle school reading, sixth, seventh and eighth grade. I'm a, I'm a wow. reading assistant. And I work with um, well, I work with all three grades during the during the school year, and during the summer right now, I've been working with seventh grade uh, seventh grade boys. And let me tell you, there's some characters. <laughs> well, you're a character yourself, so. <laughs> like, I mean, you you'd be surprised at uh, the types of personalities that I deal with every day. You know, you deal with yeah. kids that are so bubbly, kids that are mellow, kids that are kind of you know they they like to be the life of the party. And when you combine them all in the classroom, it's a whole, it's a, a great experience. Wow. So do you always feel that you had a calling to be a teacher? Well, my, my main calling first that I really wanted mm -hmm. to pursue was meteorology. I'm one of those Ooh, guys, I, especially the hurricane hunting side of things. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm fascinated by mm -hmm. storms. Especially yeah. hurricanes, when you when you see them, when you see it, uh, when they talk about it in the news, and they see, they tell you the pressure, mm -hmm. and they go inside the plane. Like I've always wanted to be a hurricane hunter because I, I just yeah. I'm just fascinated by hurricanes, like how they form and you know how they you know it's it's incredible. But <laughs> uh, as we know, my math skills are out the window. <laughs> I can't I can't do math. I, I'm not good at math. I mean, I. Yeah. I was able to get bypass it because I got my sociology degree. Mm. So I took I took stats. And that wasn't so bad. I mean <laughs> Yeah, I passed stats because uh we all cheated, as in we had a uh a teacher come in mid semester and he basically was easy on us and we were allowed to do group work together. <laughs> so that's how I passed stats. That, um, that's I the best kind of class is when you could do group work and, yeah. and the teacher counts it. Yeah, but let me tell you, this was at community college, and a lot of us did not know what we were doing. <laughs> but I just, um, I find it incredible the work you're doing. So, how long have you been teaching now? And you're 30 now. Yeah. Uh, this will be four years, but then I am transitioning to a new role come this August. Oh, wow. I'll be wow. a, uh, thank you. I'm going to be a uh, youth student advocate, which means I'll be working mm -hmm. more behind the scenes and I'll be more, I'll be working toward with students towards their life skills, developing their, their, you know, their character to become future leaders, you know, of, of whatever they do, you know, whatever they pursue and to teach them that, you know, you, you might be struggling yourself with something internally or around you, but you have the ability to take control of your future and what you want to do in life, wow. you know? Yeah, this is really powerful and it's hitting me because I, um, uh, a friend of ours, um, 
online from Les Brown's Academy, he, he recently lost uh, his nephew to suicide, who was, uh, I believe, 15. And recently I saw another post uh, on my Instagram where someone who, uh, someone they knew, um, a young girl, uh, hung herself as well. So I feel like suicide prevention is really necessary and school system is where it needs to be, you know, tackled mainly. And you being there and being an inspiration, despite of, you know, your own challenges you overcame, like, if it wasn't for, you know, your stepmom advocating, like you said, for you, you wouldn't be able to be in this place to help advocate for other children. So it's like a domino effect now. What do you think? I, I think so, too. It's it always begins in the environment that you're raised in. That's mm. where that's where your your path kind of starts. But like I said, ultimately, as you get older, you start experiencing new new things. Mm. You start um you start notice you start learning new things and you start, you know, try to experiment and and one of the things that I always told myself is while I was growing up, I always thought of myself as, oh, I'm I'm just a kid with CP, like I'm nothing else. Wow. Uh, and like I posted a few days ago, I, I didn't find myself till I was 25 years old. I always thought of myself as I'm somebody with CP, but but then I thought to myself, who am I as a person? Mm. What is my true calling? That's you right. Know? What what am I what what why was I given this gift? I don't consider this condition, this disability, uh, a disadvantage. It's a gift that was given to me. And you have to take advantage and use it. Use it for the better. Use it for the better of the world. And that's why I got into motivational speaking, into teaching, into all these things that give back to the community. And um, that's kind of what identifies myself is the is the you're you're you know you're not just somebody with cerebral palsy, but you're 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 a teacher. You're an athlete. Your brother, your role model to so many people. That is who I am. Wow. You know, don't let the disability define you. Let your actions and what you do define who you are. So I have to ask you, do you ever forget that you know you have cerebral palsy? Like it's so normal to you, like how it'll be a tattoo. Like, do you forget, oh, I have this, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, there's times where I get kind of carried away. You know, people have to remind me, you know, you have to you have to slow down. I constantly at work they're like you get, you got to slow down and ask for help cuz I, I like to do everything you know by myself I'm really independent but they're like mm. if you need help ask <laughs> for it and I never do I'm, I'm really stubborn right. uh, I I got to be honest with you I'm stubborn Do you believe you're stubborn because you have it or do you feel like you'd be that way by nature if you did it do you know Good question Right uh, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like I'm I feel like I'm stubborn because I have it and I have to push myself I have to push myself a bit more, even though I feel like I don't have to prove anything else to myself mm. or to anyone in general. But, you know, it's it's one of those things It comes. You know, I can re resonate because uh, three days ago I sprained my ankle. So right now it's in a cast. And I remember leaving the hospital on the crutches. And I haven't had crutches since I was a child when I broke the same ankle that I have right now um, that I injured. So as I was leaving, I'm going really fast with the crutches and the nurse like, slow down, you have to build muscle. And then I got like really tired. I was like, I need to sit down. So it's like, it's like, yeah, I'm stubborn as in like, I want to be independent. Like I want to be able to walk. So like being on crutches really hit me hard. The fact that the ability to walk, you know, for a while, like I won't be. So it just makes you think that how grateful I am that it's nothing worse. So do you ever feel like even with CP that you're grateful it's not worse because of people who have like no movement down below the neck and different things, you know? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that my type of CP is not as severe as other types because there's mm -hmm. uh, cerebral palsy, it varies. Like with mine, they kind of go into detail with it. I was born with a spastic cerebral palsy Mm -hmm. And um, it, spastic hemiplasia, which means hemi, it means it affects one side. So the side that impacts me is my right side. Mm -hmm. um, I will I suffer from lack of oxygen, so I was born four months premature. I was, if you if you take a if you take a water bottle mm -hmm. and you hold it, that's how small it was. Wow! And I only a few ounces. <laughs> wow! Yeah. You could hold me with one hand. Yeah. And um, 
you know, but C CP varies. Like you can have issues with like motor control, hand-eye coordination, mm. speech. I was in speech classes for a very long time. I mean, I, I had very very limited vocabulary. I could barely like put a put a sentence two on two together. And um, if it wasn't for speech and like I said, like to kind of go back to help my stepmom to teach me how to do all these things, I wouldn't be able to really speak or be able to, you know, do, do what I'm doing now. Wow. So, you know, um, cerebral palsy isn't a, I tell people it's not a bad thing. It's, it's only, it's only bad if you think about it. If you have the mindset, uh, always negative that you're going to be stuck with that. You're going to think, Oh, CP is horrible. I don't want this. And I, I see it often, like in the, in the, in the groups that we're in, like CP mm. groups and stuff, I see them pitting themselves and I'm like, don't pity yourself. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of your cerebral palsy. Embrace it. And like I said, it took me 25 years to embrace it. Now I embrace it fully. It's a part of me. It'll always be a part of me. Yeah. Like wearing glasses. I mean, it doesn't have to always We get LASIK, but I want to ask you about those groups because do, do those groups benefit your energy or do they bring you down? Because you remember the population that's in it are complaining. So um, do you feel like you bring the light to them? Oh yeah. I mean, it's not, not everybody complains. This mm. is, you know, you have your few stragglers, but don't, <laughs> don't, don't, um, don't judge them. Try mm. to encourage them, you know, mm, like I've seen, yeah. I guess, like I've seen people in those groups be really like, I don't know what it is, but they can be really mean. And it's like, don't be mean to them. Try to encourage each other. Don't break each other down. Wow. You know, that's, what, that's, what, that's what the group is for. It's not to to break people down. It's to encourage them, to uplift them, to to see them be successful. And, wow. you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. CP is an incredible thing, you know. Wow. I never heard anyone say that. Yeah, no, that's I, you know, I, I don't let it, you know, stop me from achieving my goals. And then I, why, why should you, you know? Yeah. So I want to ask you, what is your next, you know, desire with the field that you're in? What do you want to do? Like, what is the change you want to see? Well, eventually, um, I, I want to keep doing this for the next few years. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I've done, I've done I, 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 my current job currently is mm -hmm. um, right now I'm the only physically disabled um, individual employee with cerebral palsy serving in my department with AmeriCorps at the city of Orlando. Mm -hmm. So right now with my um, program managers and everybody there, a few years ago, I, I alongside them, I put together a, a session. So every year I go into talk to the new recruits about disability inclusion and how important it is to to um, to accept those with disabilities in the workplace and to be mindful of people with various disabilities you know physical mental you know invisible and to not to not judge to be open-minded you know and that's one of the things that I, why I came up with this is we want to have the workplace to be open-minded, to be a positive culture for not just able-bodied individuals, but for everyone. So I, I, what I've been trying to do the last four years is to bring that bring that culture in, to bring more diversity. So every every time I see somebody that's posting about they need a they need a job or an opportunity and they have a disability, I'm like, why don't I why don't I try to get you in? Because we need more people with disabilities in this in this um in this department with AmeriCorps mm -hmm. and just, just in the classroom in general, because in the classroom, the reason that you don't see uh, uh, very many teachers with disabilities is because, you know, they, they have that um, challenge of, oh, what if the kids like eat me alive? You know, like they'll, they'll yell at me or they'll, they'll, they'll treat me like, like dirt or, you know, they'll, they'll take my, um my device and throw it across the room or something. Mm -hmm. And, and it's funny because when I first when I the first day I came in, the those kids those kids were like you know some of the kids were like making snark snarky remarks, and the the moment I opened my mouth it's like, well wait a minute, you know he he means business. Now I come from I come from a from a, a family of educators. My stepmom is a special ed teacher, wow. behavioral specialist now. My aunt was a special ed teacher. 
My great grandfather was a, he started as a teacher at 17 years old, taught to, he was 47, was a superintendent, a university, te- a university English teacher in Puerto Rico. Wow. So I, I grew up around it. So I, I knew what to do. So I, I knew all this <laughs> the trade right from day one. Those kids thought, oh, we're going to take advantage of this, this, this teacher. And, and the minute I opened my mouth, they're like, oh, snap. He, he's not stupid. He, he knows what he's doing. Mm. Like, like, I don't put up with nonsense. Like, I'm like, okay, we can do this. We can do this the easy way where I'm the cool teacher, the kind teacher, the one who makes fun activities. Or we can do this the hard way where I can sit you down, write a couple essays, and we'll call it a day. Wow. You, you, you as a student have the responsibility to, to, uh, to give yourself a positive outcome. Now, that, that's your choice, not mine. Wow. Did you always have this much confidence? Like, did you do any self-development? Or is it just because of the support you had and the mindset on your own? Because that's really incredible. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. I, I used to never have this kind of confidence. I used to be one of those wow. uh, students. I used to sit in the in the cafeteria by himself, have lunch, wow. didn't really have very many friends. Um, there was one point in high school where I kind of struggled with my um, self-image and trying to figure out who I was. And um, there are times where I just, I would just break down, you know, mm. just because I didn't feel like myself, you know, I, I was self pitying myself. I was questioning wh- why did I get the CP, mm. you know, and it's like, and it, it was very, it was a very dark time, but I, fortunately I got out of it. And then as years progressed, I started slowly but surely embracing it until Till now where I'm like, you know, this is me. So if you got an issue with it, you can just keep walking. Wow. I love that. And I'm glad that you sorted out at age by age 25, because I sorted myself out last year at 27. So yes, I'm glad that we didn't like grow older and then have to suffer that long with what we're going through, you know? Wow. So tell us about the work you're doing now. Do you want to share? Sure. Well, well, now I'm actually, um, I started motivational speaking and being an advocate uh, five years ago. Mm. And um, it's been a really interesting journey. Like when I first started back uh, four years ago, um, I, I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I was like, because I had so many um, of my family members, my friends were like, you should do public speaking. You could be really good at it. And I was skeptical. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't really do good in crowds. I mean, I'm going to probably, I'm going to probably like, you know, get squeamish and get scared and get stage fright. And l- let me tell you the first couple of appearances I had back in 2017, they were, they were awful. I mean, in my opinion, they were awful. Like mm-hmm. I would speak and I just like be drenched in like sweat because I'm so nervous and just <laughs> shaking and, Everybody is like, you did a wonderful job. And uh, my, at the back of my head, I'm like, I didn't do too good. And I'm like, at least I tried. If I don't do, if I ended up not doing it again, then that's fine. Mm-hmm. At least I tried. But then I said, you know what? Let's keep it going. Let's do a few more. And as I did a few more, I started to realize, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't so bad. You just got to hone your skills. Just be confident in yourself. You know, this is this is your story. They're, the reason that they're there. It's to listen to you, and they've heard about you. They've heard how wonderful you are. Mm. And when you when you think of when you have a mindset, when you keep your mindset positive and open minded, it makes speaking a whole lot easier. Versus negativity, close it off, close off your mind, close everybody around you. Don't don't you know? And that's that's where all, that's where like all the self doubt comes in because the minute you doubt yourself is the minute you'll fall flat on your face. Wow. Don't wow. Ever, don't ever doubt yourself. Yeah. You're dropping gems. <laughs> I'm going to pick out some gems. Yeah. Wow. Where do you, do, do you see your, like, do you vision, you know, use a vision board and like, where do you see yourself by like 40? I'm hoping with a few best selling books. Yeah. And a Ooh. TED talk, a TED talk uh, down my, on my belt. Wow. I'm chasing, I'm chasing that TED talk. I want to do one so bad. And I, I've been really? working, I've been working on my public speaking skills and just everything in yeah. general. Cause I, I've seen how, how, 
how major it is, how the amount of people you can influence and inspire, mm. you know, it's incredible. Yeah. I know a few people who have done TED Talks. I, I'd love to connect you with them if you'd like. Yeah, that, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, possibly they can have you on stage as well. Share with everyone, um, you know, where they can find your YouTube channel because I like your YouTube channel a lot. Um, you can find me on, on um, Linktree on Linktree at David CP Fitness 65, mm -hmm. but the channel is David CP Fitness, so you can find it on there. Okay, cool. And I'm going to link it as well, but I do want to talk a bit more about, you know, you being a cyclist. Tell us about that journey. Uh, well, I'm a former three-time state champion cyclist um, in Florida. <laughs> so this was years ago. This was back in 2001 that wow. happened. So I did wow. it for years, wow. for, for about three, four years. And I really enjoyed it, you know, kind of gave me a chance to develop myself as an athlete and as an individual. Hmm. And I did, I did baseball and football too. So I, I really, you know, had a wonderful experience with it. Wow. What do you feel is, you know, your main niche? So you like to motivationally speak, you like sports and teaching kids. So what is the main thing that you want to do moving forward? Advocacy, be an advocate. Wow. Is that for cerebral palsy or is that for specifically? For pretty much for everything, you know, from cerebral palsy mm -hmm. to just life in general, just to teach people, hey, you know, you may have a disability or, or struggle with anything in general, but you can you can get out of it. You can you can achieve your goals mm -hmm. if you put your mind to it. I like that. And I want to ask you a question regarding mental health, because I know during high school you had some challenges. Right. So during those times, did you just wait for the dark days to be over? Like, were you suicidal and like clinically depressed as well? Oh, no. Oh, no. I just waited for the days to pass by. I, mm -hmm. I never got to that point, fortunately. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, no. No. I, I, wow. I, you know, you get you hit that rebellious phase where you're like, you don't really care about anything. You know, you're great suffer, but mm -hmm. it wasn't anything like crazy like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Trust me, it's extreme. I believe it's because you had the support. I feel like yeah. if you didn't, then it would be a whole other ball game, possibly. Exactly. Wow. What else would you like to share with us today? Well, um, if I, I guess if I could share some advice uh, yeah. to those that are struggling right now is, I remember that you are valued to a lot of people. You're appreciated. You're you're loved regardless of what physical, mental, or any kind of obstacle you face in, in life. Um, you know, be yourself, be yourself. Uh, don't, don't doubt yourself in anything you do. Uh, take, take the risk, go for it. And if, if you fail, you fail, just get back up and keep going. Um, and learn to love and appreciate those around you and, and just life in general, because you, you're, you know, there, there's a lot more light than negativity in that tunnel. So just keep pushing forward. Wow. I really like when you speak your wisdom, it's because the tone you speak it in and it's just so calming and just overall. Yeah. It's really touching. So <laughs> thank you for being on Chai together today. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. Yeah, I'm glad. So what's next? <laughs> more podcasts? Yep, more more podcasts and just keep moving on forward. Keep spreading that positivity. Wow. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank everyone, for you. tuning in today.